The Arkham Quadrilogy is among one of the most beloved depictions of Batman in not only gaming, but the character's existence as a whole. We had four excellent games depicting Batman's beginning, prime, and fall. Pioneering an entirely new fighting mechanic, one that many games sought to adapt thereafter, the Arkham games have truly become timeless masterpieces. In 2015, the conclusion of Batman Arkham Knight saw Bruce Wayne's identity being made public. In the aftermath, he seemingly faked his death to either retire as the Cape Crusader or fully embrace the Dark Knight. The ending was very ambiguous and confusing to say the least, and it definitely left fans wanting more. But for the longest time, we had nothing. Not a peep from WB about the next Arkham game, or if there even would be another Arkham game. Fans were left wanting, hoping for a new chapter in the Arkham series. Then, from seemingly nowhere, we finally got an inkling of Arkham's uncertain future. Beginning development in the late 2000s, Batman Arkham Asylum was developed by Rocksteady and Warner Bros. With the initial concept of developing a Batman game on an original idea, not an adaptation of a pre-existing comic, the Arkham team quickly caught the attention of Paul Dini, one of the lead writers of Batman the Animated Series. Alongside Dini came other animated series alumni, such as the late great Kevin Conroy and Arlene Sorkin, reprising their roles as Batman and Harley Quinn, as well as Mark Hamill as the Joker. Batman Arkham Asylum also pioneered a new gameplay mechanic known as Free Flow Combat, where Batman can quickly move between enemies, chaining attacks, stunning and countering enemies, while also implementing Batman's plethora of gadgets. Not only this, Batman is able to enter stealth sections, where he must pick off enemies one by one, slowly raising their fear levels and causing them to act erratically. While being a totally original story, Batman Arkham Asylum would feature references to plot points in both the animated series and Batman comics in general, while its narrative and art style being heavily influenced by Grant Morrison's Arkham Asylum, A Serious House on Serious Earth, and 2K's Bioshock of all things, which in hindsight makes total sense. The basic plot of Batman Arkham Asylum follows the events of Joker assaulting Gotham City Hall, resulting in him being sent to Arkham Asylum. However, planning for this, Joker escapes and takes control of the asylum forcing Batman to fight through the Asylum in order to return some semblance of order. Released in 2009, Batman Arkham Asylum received critical acclaim, receiving a 92 on Metacritic and holding the Guinness World Record for most critically acclaimed superhero game ever, only losing that title to its sequel, Batman Arkham City, which received a 96. Improving upon everything great in Arkham Asylum, Arkham City was not only a larger game, but told, in my opinion, a much better story that saw the final days of the Joker as he slowly succumbed to the Titan formula he injected into himself at the climax of the prior game. After Joker's occupation of the asylum, it was swiftly condemned and Gotham's most notorious slums were converted into a massive city prison known as Arkham City. Injecting Batman with his own tainted blood, Joker forces Batman to find a cure for them both, resulting in Batman fighting through most of his famous rogues gallery. Eventually finding a cure, Batman attempts to save the Joker, but his own mania results in him losing the cure, causing the Joker to meet his untimely end. Following Arkham City was Batman Arkham Origins, which was initially said to feature a more Silver Age comic feel and would feature the likes of Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and The Flash. However, after the development of Arkham City's sequel took more precedence, Rocksteady passed Arkham Origins' development to WB Montreal instead. Changing the story to a more personal Batman Year 2 story, the game featured Batman's first encounter with the Joker on Christmas Eve. Arkham Origins was released to somewhat mixed reviews, but gained more notoriety years after its release. The final game to be released in the Arkham series was Batman Arkham Knight, which saw the culmination of the Arkham series. In this installment, players once again took on the role of Batman as he faced a new threat to Gotham, the mysterious Arkham Knight and Scarecrow. The game introduced the Batmobile as a drivable vehicle, allowing players for the first time in the series to navigate Gotham City. While stopping the Arkham Knight and Scarecrow, Batman also faced a mental projection of the Joker as he tried to take control of Batman's mind. Eventually beating Scarecrow, exercising Joker from his mind, and turning Arkham Knight who was Jason Todd, back to the light, Batman won the day, but at the cost of his identity being revealed to the world by the Scarecrow. In the end, Batman activates the Nightfall Protocol, and after returning to Wayne Manor, it explodes, with Batman seemingly dying in the process. However, a fear toxin-like monster of Batman would be seen roaming the streets of Gotham in the following months. With a pretty clear beginning, middle, and end, this series reached its natural conclusion. While, yes, the ending is very ambiguous and implies many things, for the most part, Bruce Wayne's story was over, and in the years to follow Arkham Knight's release, we were really left with nothing. The series was over, so what should we be looking forward to? Well, in 2016, rumors begin to surface about the next installment of the Arkham franchise.
Going by the codename of Project Sabbath, rumors began to circulate online around 2016 following the end of Arkham Knight's additional DLC content. These rumors discussed the development of an Arkham Knight sequel that would follow Damian Wayne as the new Batman. None of these rumors could be substantiated, so discussions on the potential Damian Wayne Batman game fell to the wayside. Years would pass, and this theoretical Damian Wayne game was reportedly cancelled. Yet, again, we still had nothing to go by other than hearsay. However, in 2019, we finally got something. Multiple images were posted to Twitter by Slickmoth showing multiple rumored characters such as Dick Grayson, Two-Face, now going by the moniker of The Judge, a female Black Mask, a new Poison Ivy, Gorilla Grodd, an elderly and decrepit looking White Rabbit, and two images featuring a derelict Wayne Enterprises and a run-down Gotham with Batman riding on the Bat Cycle. Not long after, Slickmoth spoke with journalist Gabriel Jelani, who shed further light on the project, providing a list of additional heroes and villains that were set to appear in the game, such as Nocturna, Abattoir, the Dee Dee Twins, the Tweedle Twins, the Riddler, Talon, Flamingo, Mr. Freeze, Harvey Bullock, Sarah Tompkins, and Katana. And elaborating further on the inclusion of a gender-bent black mask, apparently she was Roman Sionis' daughter. Which makes a lot of sense when looking at Arkham Origins, as we can actually see Roman with a blonde woman who was presumably her mother. The final bit of information we received was that this game would be set 10 years after Arkham Knight, with Bruce Wayne acting as a mentor for his son Damien. The Bat Cycle would appear, and there would be the inclusion of the Nemesis system from Shadow of Mordor. For those of you who are unaware of what this system is, basically the game will track any enemy the player comes into contact with, and if the enemy defeats the player, the enemy will be promoted, given a random name, given substantial buffs and unique abilities, making them more difficult to defeat the next time the player encounters them. The more the player falls to them, the stronger the enemy becomes, and thus an infinite amount of unique nemeses and encounters could be developed for each playthrough. This was huge. For the first time since the rumors in 2016, we actually had concrete evidence of this game's existence. In early 2020, James Sigfield posted more Project Sabbath concept art on Twitter that gave us a better look at the Bat Cycle, as well as saying, expect a lot of things from the cancelled Damien game to be in the new Batman game. Most likely of them, the Bat Cycle. Interestingly enough, a new Batman game titled Gotham Knights was unveiled in August of that year, which did in fact feature the Bat Cycle. The following year in 2021, concept artist Gorian Buckvik posted to his ArtStation account concepts for an unspecified cancelled Batman game that seemed to line up quite well with the rumors about Project Sabbath. These images included an elderly bearded Batman, a younger looking Batman in a very Batman Beyond inspired bat suit, as well as a few other variations. A handful of years later, Buckvik would upload a few other pieces of concept art that showcased an upgraded version of the bat suit, a sleeker, more silver looking version of that suit, and a 60 year old Harley Quinn still in mourning. And for the most part, that was all we really had. However, in early 2024, voice actor Josh Keaton discussed his involvement in the project during a live stream. I, I, you know what? I would love to get a shot at Batman. I almost did. I almost did. There was a, there was a game that I was going to be a part of that I was going to play Batman, and it wasn't going to be Bruce Wayne Batman. It was a different Batman. But um, yeah, the game, the game, like everything about the game got leaked on, on some forum, and they ended up shutting it down. I'd done like three or four sessions on it. And that was the end of that game. Bummer, 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 bummer. Thanks, leaks. But yeah, it was uh, it was uh, Damien. It was the Damien Batman that I was going to be. But they they leaked everything. They leaked the whole plot line. They leaked not only the enemies, but like and, and villains and and the rogues gallery, but also like the concept art for them. And they were doing such a different take on so many of the the rogues gallery that I mean, it just it gave away everything that was different about the game. So it kind of sucked. Yeah, the leaks killed the project. The leaks totally killed the project. Uh, no, it was not gonna be in the Arkhamverse. Totally, totally different thing. Apparently this Damian Wayne game wasn't an Arkham game, and he believes that this game was canceled due to the leaks. However, games journalist Jason Schreier stated that there was zero truth to the claim that the game was canceled because of leaks. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if this game was still in the Arkham universe, it just wasn't titled Batman Arkham something, thus leading Keaton to say what he said. And with only one more piece of concept art that was released rather recently and doesn't reveal much, that's all we really know about this lost Batman game. But we can still speculate. So let's establish what we know. 
The game follows Damian Wayne as he takes up the mantle from his father 10 years after the events of Arkham Knight. We know there'd be a plethora of returning villains, but the one villain in particular that stood out to me was Talon. Talon, for those of you who don't know, is a member of the Court of Owls. He and the many others who go by the same name are assassins for the court. Another very important piece of info we learned about this game was that many of its assets were recycled for Gotham Knights a game where Batman dies and Nightwing, Red Hood, Robin, and Batgirl take up the mantle of Gotham's protector as the Court of Owls tries to take over, which seems pretty similar to what we almost got. So if I were to make an educated guess about the story of this game, it would go as follows. After Bruce Wayne is revealed to be the Batman, he goes into hiding. Sure, he pops up around Gotham from time to time using fear gas to further cement the legend of the Batman, but he never really gains as much prominence as he once had. After the revelation of Bruce being Batman, Wayne Enterprises went under. Its building now stands tall and vacant, like a tomb of a fallen idol. Bruce, as we've seen in the Arkham games, is very much a man of the people, and I'd imagine a lot of his foundations and charities to help Gotham also went under when Wayne Enterprises fell. The result was less and less support for Gotham's citizens, a slowly but surely rise in crime slash poverty, and most likely corporate infighting to seize the crown Wayne Enterprises once had. The end result was this pseudo-corporate controlled poverty-stricken hellhole known as Gotham. Potentially the game begins when Jacob Kane, Bruce's uncle, wins the mayoral race and becomes the mayor of Gotham while his wife, Catherine Kane, becomes the commissioner of the GCPD. Kane plans to enact multiple projects to save the crumbling city, just like his nephew once did. And to further reference Batman Beyond, he could potentially rebrand the city as Neo-Gotham. In the background, Jacob Kane is actually the voice of the Court of the Owls, and wants to bring order to the city through highly drastic measures. Enter Batman. Damian Wayne finishes up his training with his father just as they learn of the Court's existence and plans of mass control over the city. I'd imagine we'd have a full map of Gotham to explore each broken up into sections controlled by different faction leaders, all working under the court. And that court motif could be a through line for everything. We have Harvey Dent as the judge, this new black mask as the executioner, and spitballing here, maybe Gorilla Grodd as the bailiff or something along those lines. White Rabbit and the new Poison Ivy are probably just side characters for side quests, as are the other characters listed from the leak. Harvey Bullock could potentially be Damien's new Gordon, Sarah Tompkins is most likely Leslie Tompkins' daughter, and would either be a love interest for Batman or his version of Oracle. And just like in Gotham Knights, Talia is probably back, as we saw hinted at in Arkham Knight, and leads the new League of Assassins into war with the Court of Owls. I imagine the Nemesis system would act in a very similar manner to Shadow of Mordor. That being, take out the underlings to get to the top dog. The top dog in this case could be any of the big name villains we saw in the leak. So for example, Harvey Dent controls one district, after you take out all of his lieutenants, all of which are procedurally generated, then you can finally get to him. If one of his lieutenants beats you, they get a name, buffs, etc. You know, the Shadow of Mordor stuff. So basically each and every playthrough would have been totally unique in terms of enemy variety and in how you reach the end boss. So essentially, this game could have been a Court of the Owls Batman Beyond hybrid set in a semi-cyberpunk future Gotham, or, you know, Gotham Knights if the story was actually good. If I am anywhere near accurate to what this game could have been, then ouch. We definitely lost something that could have been phenomenal. Regardless, the future of the Arkham series is uncertain. Once upon a time, I thought this game could have had a chance to see the light of day. But with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League taking place in the Arkham universe and establishing new lore that would greatly contradict the Damian Wayne game, I have a feeling we may never see this potentially phenomenal game.